Service mesh technologies in Kubernetes like Istio achieve a service mesh by injecting a sidecar proxy into an existing pod to intercept traffic. This enables Istio to implement all the cool service mesh features it is well known for. In this video, we will drill down into the processes happening behind the scenes during the proxy injection process. We will also take a look at how traffic is intercepted and redirected through the proxy and how the proxy processes this traffic. And finally, we'll take a brief look at the future of service mesh, including Istio's ambient mode and the use of eBPF. Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Morris. If you're new here, I talk about DevOps and Kubernetes. Consider subscribing for more videos like this. After Istio Service Mesh is installed in your cluster, the next thing you need to do is opt applications into the Service Mesh. This can be done manually with the Istio CTL command or automatically through a Kubernetes admission controller. To manually add an application deployment to the Service Mesh, you issue the Istio CTL kubeinject command, passing your deployment's manifest file as an argument, and then piping that into kubectl apply to apply the modified deployment manifest. What the Istio CTL inject command is doing is simply adding additional container definitions to the pod spec in the deployment's manifest. We will take a closer look at these container definitions in a bit. When using automatic injection, Istio makes use of a Kubernetes admission controller, specifically the mutating webhook admission controller, to automatically add Istio container definitions to the pod spec of new pods. An admission controller is a piece of code that intercepts requests to the Kubernetes API server prior to persistence of the object, but after the request is authenticated and authorized. An admission controller can be used to enforce custom rules and policies around the admission of resources into a Kubernetes cluster. For example, you might want to make sure that all deployments created in your cluster have specific CPU and memory limits. You can create a policy which will check new deployments for this requirement and then modify the deployment YAML before it is persisted into HCD. To configure your deployments to use automatic injection, you simply label the namespace to which your application is deployed. The kubectl label command can be used to label the namespace with the istio injection label set to enabled. Istio uses the admission controller to make sure that any new pods created in this namespace are modified with the Istio container definitions. Let us take a closer look now at an example of a modified pod spec to see what exactly is added as part of the Istio configuration. We can get the YAML output of a pod that is running as part of the service mesh. From this example, we can see that a new container called Istio proxy has been added to the pod as a sidecar container. We can also see that another container called Istio init has been added as an init container. The Istio sidecar container is based on Envoy proxy and this is the container which will be responsible for managing traffic coming in and out of the pod. Envoy proxy is a high performance open source proxy server designed for modern distributed applications. It is often used as a service mesh data plane proxy providing a unified control plane for traffic management, observability, and security in microservices architecture. We will get an overview of how Envoy works next, but let us first understand what is going on with the Istio init container. In a Kubernetes pod, an init container is a specialized container that runs before the main application's containers start. Its purpose is to perform initialization tasks such as setting up configurations, downloading data, or waiting for other services to become available. Here, the main task of the init container is to set up new Istio routing rules in IP tables. As we mentioned earlier, Istio needs to be able to redirect traffic through the proxy container, and this is done with IP tables rules. IP tables is a software package used on Linux systems to configure and manage packet filtering rules in the Linux kernel. It is a part of the NetFilter framework which provides a set of hooks within the Linux kernel that can be used to intercept and manipulate network packets. IP tables uses a series of chains to manage packet filtering and manipulation. 
Each chain is a sequence of rules that define how packets are processed. When a packet arrives at a network interface, it is passed through the chains in order until a rule is found that matches that packet's properties. The action specified by the rule is then applied to the packet and it is either accepted, rejected or modified according to the rule. We can see what rules the Istio init container configures by looking at the IP tables rules in the container. To do that, first we need to SSH into the node on which the pod is running. We run this docker command to get the process ID of the container. If you're using containerd as the container engine, you can run this command instead. We can then attach to the network namespace of the pod with the nsenter command. At this point, it is as if we are logged on to a shell on the pod itself and any commands we run are processed from the perspective of the pod. If we run the IP tables dash d nut dash l dash v, we can see all the rules and custom chains Istio has added. We also see the inbuilt IP tables chains, pre-routing, input, forward, output, and post-routing. Let us examine exactly what is happening here by following an example of traffic as it enters the pod destined for an application container listening on port 80. Once this traffic enters the pod, it will have a destination IP address of 127.0.0.1 and a destination port 80. As this is incoming traffic, it will be processed first in the pre-routing chain. The only rule in the pre-routing chain says that any TCP traffic arriving at any interface from any interface with any IP address as a source destined for any destination IP address should be redirected to the Istio inbound chain. This basically means that all incoming traffic is to be redirected to the Istio inbound chain, skipping the input chain altogether. The traffic is then processed at the Istio inbound chain. At the Istio inbound chain, we have five rules. The first four rules match traffic destined for TCP ports 15008, 15090, 15021, and 15020 respectively. These are special ports used by the Istio proxy. Our traffic will match none of these rules since it is destined for port 80. The fifth rule essentially matches any TCP traffic and redirects it to the Istio in redirect chain. All traffic entering this chain will be redirected to localhost on port 15006, which is the port the proxy is listening on. At this point, the incoming traffic has been successfully handed over to the Envoy proxy for processing before it is forwarded to the application container. When the traffic leaves the proxy, it will be bound to the source IP of 127.0.0.6, the destination IP and port of 127.0.0.1 and 80 respectively. Since it is being sourced from a localhost IP, it will hit the output chain first. The output chain redirects it to the Istio output chain. The traffic will match the first rule, which matches all traffic with the source IP of 127.0.0.6 and returns it to the previous chain. Back at the previous chain, which is output, the traffic will be passed successfully to its destination, the application container, since there are no more rules left to match. What about outgoing traffic? What happens when an application container needs to send traffic to another pod or external service? Being outgoing traffic, it will go first to the output chain, which will redirect it to the Istio output chain. At the Istio output chain, it will not match the first rule since it does not have the source IP address of 127.0.0.6. Moving on to the second rule, it says that all TCP traffic from any source address to any destination address that is not destined for local host and does not have the UID of 1337 should be redirected to the Istio in redirect chain. The exclamation point here means a negative, so not localhost and not UID 1337. UID 1337 is the Istio proxy user ID, so this means traffic not originating from the proxy container itself. At this point, the traffic hits the Istio in redirect chain, which redirects it to port 15001, which is also a port on which the proxy container is listening on. This is how outgoing traffic is handed off once more to the proxy for further processing. We have already covered how traffic leaving the proxy is handled. It is passed through Istio output and returned to output where it is forwarded without further evaluation. So the traffic will now be forwarded to its final destination.
Now that we know how incoming and outgoing traffic enters and leaves the Envoy proxy, let us take a look at what happens to the traffic as it traverses the proxy. We will simply cover the basics of how Envoy handles traffic. In Envoy, the flow of network traffic is structured around a series of configurable components called listeners, filters, and clusters. Envoy's flow of traffic is composed of a listener that listens for incoming traffic on a specific protocol and port. When traffic arrives at the listener, it is passed to a filter chain, which is a sequence of filters that perform various functions such as authentication, rate limiting, load balancing, and encryption or decryption. Each filter is a configurable component that processes network traffic. A cluster is a group of backend servers that can handle traffic for a specific service. This is where the traffic is forwarded after it exits the proxy. This could be the application container, another pod in the cluster, or even a remote server. The cluster can be a single endpoint or a group of endpoints. When a request arrives, the load balancer selects a server from the cluster to handle the request and distributes the traffic using various load balancing algorithms. Now, in Istio, you will hear the terms inbound and outbound handlers used. An inbound handler is simply composed of an envoy listener and a filter chain to handle incoming traffic. An outbound handler will have routing and cluster information to handle outgoing traffic. Let us take a look at an example configuration. This configuration defines a single listener named HTTP listener that listens on port 15001 for incoming HTTP traffic. Incoming requests are passed through the HTTP connection manager filter, which uses the local route route configuration to forward requests to the appropriate backend clusters based on their URL path. The configuration defines two backend clusters, web service and API service, both of which have round robin load balancing to distribute traffic across their endpoints. The endpoints for each cluster are defined using static addresses. As we mentioned earlier, Envoy can process traffic using several filters like rate limiting as shown by this configuration section. We also have this snippet which shows role-based access controls including encryption and decryption with TLS. Traffic can also be load balanced across multiple endpoints as shown in this cluster configuration. There's a wealth of configurable options that we cannot cover here, but I'm sure you can see why Envoy is a critical component in service mesh architecture. It has the ability to handle complex traffic management tasks and provides a high degree of security and reliability. In this video, we have been able to get a deeper understanding in Istio's sidecar injection process, how traffic is intercepted using IP tables, and how Envoy manages traffic in the service mesh. As you might be able to deduce, running Istio in your cluster has the potential to create overhead problems. You basically need to run an extra container for each port in your workload and this can cause a strain on your CPU, memory and network bandwidth. That is why innovations in sidecarless architectures like Istio's Ambient Mesh and eBPF represent an exciting development in the future of service mesh. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Please remember to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified of new videos. Once again, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.